Is Rena? Okay. Oh. Uh, yes. Where and can someone check Skype also? Because this is his. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The two. That's I know the other three. Yeah. That's five. Okay. One more for John. One more for John. Okay. I'll text the game. Um, oh, that's going to make a mistake. Our... Sorry. No, we're good. Are we good? Are we good? Okay, welcome to our Friday, October the 27th meeting. Um, let's start by reading the mission. Does anyone want to read it? I'll do it. Thanks, Matt. Um, to, our mission for TSEC is to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so before we start, we have the group norms thing there again. We will scratch that because we have Re coming up with a bunch of things, wonderful and beautiful things. <laughs> um, okay. Fine. Would anyone like, is everybody okay with the agenda? Does anybody have a chance to look at the agenda? Can we vote in this if we don't have a quorum? Can you can't we vote? vote, so you're just going to do Okay, so we're going to. That works we well did. for me because I need a discussion. So I love that. Sorry for everybody okay. else who wanted to pass things. <laughs> we're not going to. Well, no, but like we can't even vote for the agenda. So we're just going to. Go through it. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Um, okay, I'll start with you. Uh, William Coates, present. Matthew Rathbun, present. John Nelson, present. Danny Palacios, present. Kristen Nairbard present. Online. Ree Marco present. Oh, and Gabe Trujillo present. Thank you, Gabe. That makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just need one more. <laughs> May I leave the stage? Oh, oh you, you already did it. Oh, yeah. Did? oh. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, John. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with announcements just for a little, yeah. Hopefully, someone else shows up. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike is currently doing his thing at the Board of Trustees, so we will wait for next week. Take up. Gabe, do you want to start? Sure, awesome. Um, so with SACAB, we have our next meeting coming up this Tuesday. Um, and in this meeting, we hope to, to support a, uh, the sustainability program um, with their uh, AHA week. And so that's something we're we're planning right now and to, uh, to, uh, to vote on hopefully on Tuesday. And let's see. And then last Tuesday, so like this to last Tuesday of this week, um, I don't know if y'all saw like the big event that happened. Um, that was a partnership with, with like AHEX strategy folks and stuff, um, along with I don't know whoever does sports, you know. ESPN. I, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. And it was like, like a partnership and stuff, and, and, and it had like this whole big event, you know, the chain smokers came and performed. Uh, we had a, a shack and other players in. And so that that was successful. They had like 4,000 plus students and people just be there. Um, so that really worked. Uh, we just hoped that there was more advertising, but that was like oh, um, something beyond the Apex control at that point. Um, and yeah, and so we have that. And lastly, I just want to ask again, do we want the, the Sasaki people who are helping like reimagine it, like Auraria to come to one of our meetings? If so, so I can help, you know, set that up. They're always looking for um for feedback from anyone who's uh, impacted by this. Uh, and so if if that's the case, just please let me know so I can start start that process. And that's all on my end. Quick uh, direct question. So you're talking about the people that are in charge of like the the building on the park. Parking in Seventh Street. Uh, so and Sasaki, of... They're the ones who who basically are helping with the whole like reimagining of Auraria. So they're the ones who have done like the open houses, um, and and they've gathered like like data. Uh, they're the ones who who, who have had it, like the fake like, like the three D molds of what okay. Auraria could look like. Um, and so the, they're the ones that are helping with all of these like big projects. Um, including uh, like the building of, of residential housing um, for faculty and staff. Uh, the, uh, they're also helping with like the C2 hub, the new C2 hub, AHEC, 
building okay. things that they're doing. Um, and so they're the ones who are basically spear spearheading that, that project. And so if we want them to come here to give us more information on what they have, um, and because uh, I remember uh, uh, Naomi last week had, had questions on like, um, you know, yeah. where those priorities stand, where those priorities lie, and yeah. Okay, yeah, I would like them to come, or I think I think we would, uh, right? Am I speaking for everybody here? That we do want them to come and talk to us? Yeah, I think that'd yeah. be cool. Um, but I think, I think just like for one, the sake of time and to make sure that we're like advocating for students, that the information that they, that they come prepared for those questions. Um, so that would probably be on us, but yeah. Yeah, can, if you wanna facilitate that game, please and thank you. Awesome, yeah. We have quorum now, Mike has joined. Yay! Okay, we can vote on the agenda. Uh, before we keep going, I'm gonna have this agenda open. Awesome, okay. Mike, are you here? Yes, I am present. Awesome, appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's vote on the agenda. Does anybody I have, have anything? For the agenda? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Um, I don't know, because I know Mike has this meeting and stuff, um, and and I believe that just, oh, uh, I'm, just I'm just saying like, how, how many resolutions would need voting? Um, so I don't know if we could like move to the voting resolutions quickly, um, so so then Mike can go back to his uh, board of trustees meetings and all that. I I don't know if that like w would work with Mike and stuff, and if that could work with the rest of the council. Mike has his hand up. Yes, Mike. Michael, you have your hand up. It's probably on this phone. You're on mute. There we go. Hello, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes um, I have a break in my meeting till 1.40. I will be in the conference room in like two minutes. Okay. Oh, okay, then we'll see you here. We'll keep going with until you get. So is there any of the new business, the presentations, presentation, new standards from norms? from RE is a discussion. Denver Inc. Scholarship is an yes. announcement. Um, the resolution is for a bond voting power. Who's That's that? the first one. Gabe. That's Gabe. That, that is Gabe. the only one we have to vote on. Okay. So I think we're going to have to move that to the very first. So then, yeah, vote to approve the agenda and then vote to move that up to okay. right now to before. Okay. I think all okay. Hands up yes, Mike. He's, his hand is still up. Don't oh. worry about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do that. Uh, let's vote for the agenda. Everyone who agree. Aye. 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 Awesome. Any abstentions? No. Okay. Uh, any, what's the other one? Oh. Abstentions. And, you know, I said abstentions. Oh, you said. No, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, positions. Oh, no. Okay. There we go. <laughs> you know what? Too many words. Okay. Uh, perfect. <laughs> Would anyone like to motion to move the thing? I move we accept the agenda. Oh, we already did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna move uh, the resolution for the able voting power to the first. Okay. I motion for that. I second. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So business. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Because thank you, Kenny. Okay. Okay. We second. We vote. Okay. Let everybody who agrees say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Aye. Any res Any ob opposition? No. Beautiful. Okay. Let's let's move. Uh, Kristen, do you have anything from second? Um, I I've been gone for a little bit. I'm working on the resolution that you talked about for supporting the sustainability event. Um, aside from that, I have nothing that Gabe didn't already cover. Beautiful. Okay. Re, do you wanna just wait until your turn to do the judiciary committee updates? I will, and I'm gonna use open updates for the safety task force. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, budget committee, Alice and here. So we move to the PR. Matt? Are we not on the resolution first? I think we have to wait for Mike to get here. Oh, he's going to come in. Yeah, he's coming here. Oh, okay. Can you, can you, did you see my message? I have a couple of documents that you follow up in my updates. Oh, uh, Update for PR, but give me one second. Yeah. 
topical juices we did today. Sure, if you want to touch on what we just did. Yes. Okay. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Um, um, which one do you, you be late, Matt? Which one do you want me to pull up? Um, really yeah. the uh, one, um, and the sack first, and then we'll do it second. Okay. But John's gonna help with the updates to start because you just did something for PR. Oh, I can, I can speak yeah. for you. Okay, hello, everybody. So this morning, um, Matthew created a layout of how the students can sign up for the King Super points and all that other kind of stuff. And so he asked me to join him and do like the voiceover because I love to sing and talk. I was so energized with doing that. That's where I, I seem to be feeling more of the PR. That's where my spirit is leading me. And so I enjoyed that. We, we connected, Matthew did, we did, I recorded my voice and I felt like in bliss. So that's why I remember Mike last week, you all suggested when I was quiet that I should move to PI. That was a good move for my spirit. <laughs> and I'll add you to the team chat so you like a picture with it. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, are you you're still doing the faculty stuff though? Are you doing the faculty and the PR? Um, give me another week to think about that. I'm still, um, give me another week. Okay. And I'll, I'll be able to say yeah or no, because I don't want to be tipped to it back and forth. Okay. 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 We'll Thank you. To you. Yeah. Michael. So as a member of PR committee, we need to get this done. Um, I sent Kenny an email. We have new logos. I have that for the next piece after the. He's uh, stepping. Yes. He uh, okay. Thank it. you. I want to make sure. Yes. Nice. In the list. Thank you. Good night. So you want to pull up the aha uh, Thank you, Kenny. Oh, oh. So we voted, or we sent around, um, we decided to table the week of the 13th, which is actually AHA week, uh, or Raria Hunger and Homeless Awareness Week. And I sent out a survey around times, but I think I want to add to the discussion actually a different time in relation to the events this week. What do you mean? So I threw out some random times because I didn't know this event was happening. Okay. But there's some events happening this week that I think would be ideal for us to table at. Okay. So if you can focus into November 13th. Because these will be happening in the ballroom area. Uh -huh. And I already talked to Cassie with Raria Sustainability. And we can probably find either a table in the ballroom or right outside. I think it would be beneficial for us to try and do it during that 9.30 to 12.15 slot if possible. Because um, that covers the SNAP benefits and creative community, uh, community solutions for food insecurity. Um, and it would be a great time to push our PR campaign with the King Supers Rewards that John had me on this morning. And also in the transitional meetings, um, Leo from CCD Student Government, their president, has contacted um, the Denver Department of Human Services to try and get a SNAP vending machine on campus. Would be a good time to maybe do stuff on that, and then we could have different surveys or flyers or whatever on the different initiatives that we want to do. Um, so I guess with that, I wanted uh, people's opinions on that time frame. Kristen, um, I I really like the idea. Um, I think that my only concern is that that's a present. So you're you're saying that the time would be that 9:30 to 10:45 time slot. 12:15. Yeah, so he wants to oh, all the way to 1215. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, in that case, I'm fine with it. I was just like, I don't know if we're putting a, a table outside of a presentation that people are supposed to be like aptly paying attention to. I was going to suggest that we have time in the breaks so that people can come out to the yeah. table. But if it covers that entire time span, that entirely alleviates my concern. And I can probably be there to help you then like try and set up at nine. So there's like a half hour beforehand. Um, and I can even triple check with Cassie to see like, how intensive it is, if there is opportunity for people to maybe step out, talk to us, or again, just 
snag a QR code so they maybe take a survey while they're in there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay. And then that is the sign up sheet is part of what you sent in the chat, right? Like there. Well, I sent a more general okay. timeframes. Um, but I was going to propose this as our awesome. official time frame, and then I'll create a sign up sheet. Um, and again, based on the tabling resolution that we passed. Um, Go ahead. All right. Please. You brush yes. really loud. <laughs> uh, um, Too sharp inhaled. We do want a number of council members that are joining the event, but for like those who can't, um, if they can talk to me and figure out how we can support. Even if like we can get help in those surveys or whatever initiative we want at that table, or maybe gathering some support um, from other departments that might be relative to it, maybe see you and snag some of their swag and share it at our table or something. Okay. Um, I like you. Bless you. So, yep. So we have enough to make forum. Um, I want to put a motion to vote on doing that time. I second that. Okay. I will say I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> quick kind of. Tell me. Clarification. I'm pretty sure because you're a parent committee, you don't need to vote on that. Yeah. Okay. You're allowed to assign sign it. Yeah, I think. Well, I guess maybe not an official like vote, but I want to make sure that there's enough people interested. Oh, in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Do that or sponsor this event. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. So I uh, do that motion, please. We motion to sponsor this event tabling late next week. Okay. Do okay. thank you. Okay. Well, Let's it's vote two on. Weeks Sorry. Yeah. It. Oh, two it's weeks. two weeks from now. Okay. Awesome. Uh, uh, beautiful. Okay. Let's vote. Everybody will agree to say aye. 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 Extensions. Any other decisions? Awesome. So I'll send out a sign up sheet um early next week. And then can you can pull up that other document? And if you want to take over, I'm not sure. Go for it. Sorry, I've been in more than a board meeting since 8 o'clock. <laughs> so I'm really hungry. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> 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 Thank, you. Thank you. There are people on scenes first. <laughs> yes. So, what you all can now see here, we're after three years of development. We finally have some logos that have our name on it. Those are not the correct ones. Yes, they are. What do you mean they're the correct ones? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't send me the correct ones. I told you to wait. Well, so these it, are not the correct ones? Why is that correct? I can send it to you now. Exactly send it to Kenny, please. What are you trying to do right now? Come on. We're trying to get some new branding here. And um, so these are some mock ups that we had made. But they're not the right one. Um, that's news to me. So <laughs> that, that, uh, that is news to the VR team. Just, just what is the point of this? Why do we, we need, need to, a new we, logo? We, Tell us. New logo, because so far all of our branding is SGA, which we are not SGA. We are not. Or is just plain TSAC. Now they're gone now, but they'll be up in there. We need to we need to vote to approve on some new logos so we can use them. So okay. That's why. That's the purpose. Of this. Okay. Okay. So. Um. And these logos, just so those are the right ones. These are the right ones. Yes. Okay. So, so here's our, what do we think? There's no red. There's yeah, no, there is. The the letter is not red. No, I really like this left one. I don't like the gray as much. So I, I like. like the, uh, I like the right one with the left top. Yeah. No, that's the, what the say right gray. logo with the left top. Yeah. Gray or yeah, I see. Oh, okay. No. So, so you see, like the bot re wants to change, like the uh, and I, so I agree, I agree. Yeah. So, like the blue, yeah, that the because format of the right one. So you want it to be open to bleed into the empty space without this barrier here? Is that what you're referencing? No, to? I think the other way. I, I think my issue with the one on the left, while I like the colors better, is that writing out Metropolitan State University of Denver makes the bottom too busy. So if we could get that. Oh, right. That's that, what I agree with as well. Okay. So you like, hold on, you like the left one with the Tivoli in detail? Yes. With yes. this here, with these bottom piece? Yes. 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 Okay, do we like this top bar here? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. We yeah. do. 
I, I don't well, feel like you need it on the left one. You have that white on the right and that kind of grounds it. You see the out the silhouette, but the left you have that solid blue, so you don't need the line above student government if you use the design on the left. So basically yeah. just switching the two logos. I yeah, that's I exactly that's right. And then and use taking the one the on the bar. left. Take the bar off. Here. So okay, so consensus is we like the blue with the detail, but just the words and everything flipped. Yes. yes. And right. no bar. And, and no bar at the top? No bar at the top. No black bar, yeah. No black bar at the top of student government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the MSU Denver is a little bit cleaner, smaller, so it's not as busy, right? Yeah. yeah. And size. Okay. Okay. So blue with the with the right. Yeah. yeah. Everyone feel good about that? Yes. With those so, changes in mind, I like to vote on this now, that those changes in the future. So we can use them right away because we'll get that fixed. So this, this, um, these seals are for internal and kind of electric public documents. They're not what my goal was to get pins and they said pins are OK, but it, this is not going to be the main. Logo, so this is yeah, this is not going to be the official seal that we're using for anything, but it could be you know our watermark on documents, it could be sticker. a couple sticker items, things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not our official thing, we still had to resort to the MSU Denver um university logo where everything's written out in letters. Oh. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes, mm -hmm. cool. Yes. So, this is our secondary, more social document use. Yes. Love it. Cool, cool. All right, so then I will send those over to... Uh, Are we motioning for Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yes. So, with those changes taken into account, <clears throat> and with the thought that they will be made, they'll be fixed, I motion to approve the second logo with the changes, correct changes made, to be used for PR purposes. It wasn't done talking, but I second that. <laughs> okay. Let everyone who agree. Aye. Aye. Beautiful. Uh, any abstentions? Any oppositions? Okay. PR committee, do you have something else? Um, I do not. Do you have anything else for Mike? Do not. Mike, do you have anything else for PR? I do not know. Okay. Um, our sustainability committee people are not here, so we're going to do. I'm sorry. What? Oh, Gabe, do you have something to say? Um, so with regards to the sustainability committee, um, there hasn't been any, any new meetings, you know, any, any new updates, um, Nate, uh, Naomi and I were trying to meet with, with Tyrell from the, um, LGBT resource center. Um, however, because Naomi went on a trip and stuff, we haven't heard back from her yet. And she's the one that has the, most of the information for the project. So I, so I couldn't meet with Tyrell because I don't have, I don't know, you know, <laughs> everything about the project. Um, and so there's that. Other than that, that's been kind of, you know, it's been very silent um, in the realm of inability for us. I have, um, go ahead, but I'm going to let our advisor speak and then I will have you. I just had a question. What is the project, Gabe? Oh, you don't yeah, know. What the project is. I do, but it's like very, like, I know the big idea of the project, um, which is, to help uh, create more, more free menstrual products for students on the campus. Um, uh, yeah, um, it, yeah, with like okay. a partnership with somebody else and stuff, but I don't have all like all like the information, the numbers, all, you know, all the important information to, sure. to, to, to push for this project. So I can yeah. meet with, with Tyrell. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm only asking because Tyrell reports to me and Tyrell is going to ask me what you're talking about, like what it's all about. So I just want to have some context or else I don't. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> and then, partially towards Gabe and this thing that we could maybe even go to Mark here, but um, I actually made a connection last night at a networking event that might be a good resource for that initiative. Um, and I also would like to meet with the PR committee. Uh, I already met with them once about a grant I found for urban farmscaping. Okay. Um, and I just want to work on it this year to try and have the university try and apply for it next October. Okay. Um, it's going to have to be either, either Paul or Naomi or Gabe. Uh, oh, so I, I just yeah. wanted to say it. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, 
Uh, just to note, also, we have Cassie coming in at 1.30, 1 1.30 p.m. Right. Okay, let's try to get, let's try to make this quick. Okay, we're going to, anybody else from the sustainability committee? Okay, open floor. Does anybody here have something open floor besides Rhi? No, okay, Rhi, I'm going to let you go. Okay, this point is just to say, please, please, Matt sent out a poll in the chat. I need you guys to respond to it and look at your diaries, your calendars, whatever, and see the three meetings that Andrew offered for police were so that we can use 30 minutes of meeting, sorry, 30 minutes outside of meeting time on either end and then an hour of our meeting time because we need to have this training. We've all agreed we want to do this. And then the hope is that we work with Elise and restorative justice to do a de-escalation, a shorter de-escalation training. So then we can present Taylor Tackett's waiting to hear our recommendation of what we would put for the whole student body during orientation. So I need us to take part in this. Please choose. We need to have 10 people as a minimum to participate in this. And um, for the university, you know, our names will be associated with this initiative, but Taylor has told me they have budget for this. So it would behoove us to do this and know this. And I told you, as you know, I'd mentioned this before that I've had them include a part that starts the training with the police role so as to kind of normalize their position in leading this because that's what they have to do, but to make students who might be uneasy about having police lead something this uh, like this understand the role because in an emergency, they're going to be leading it, right? So it helps to minimize anxiety. So they're adding that piece to this for us. So please, please, you know, answer that, look at the poll. And then what will happen is those who've picked, you know, the most of one time or day, I'll get in touch. I'll report back to everybody about this. And Matt's probably going to be monitoring this more than me because he set up the poll for me so that we can let other people know and maybe, you know, kind of synchronize it a little bit better. OK, but I really hope you all want to be part of this. I think it's important based on the fact that everybody was excited about doing a safety event like this. OK, that's it. Thank you. Um, yes, yes, yes. I have a quick, uh, quick comment, Marie or Matt. Um, could you potentially send me a list of names if you have that of the people who have a uh, answered your poll? I haven't yet. I haven't. Just, I, can, I, I guess Matt and Denny would know that. I don't afraid I don't know it. Sharing collaboration for a document with Re and you. Okay. Then okay. you just have access to it. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. So mine's a different open floor announcement I just remembered. Okay. Um, so me and Gabe after this meeting are going to be doing a informational meeting for SAB, the Student Affairs Board, um, and we're going to be recording it. So also if any of the council members know anybody that they want to throw in the mix, send them to me and Gabe and we'll send them the recording and help them get through that process if anybody has anything in mind. Yes, it's one o'clock. Just about. Okay, it is one o'clock. Oh, in the minute it's going to be one o'clock. We are going to proceed with our uh, our announcements and updates. And if someone shows up for public comment, then we will stop and offer space for that. Uh, I did have a question. Okay, what? Hold. Yes, tell me. Um, did you? I just I should have brought this up during the state kind of announcement. But did you want to talk about the? I will. The, protesting thing as part of the meeting or just off this meeting? No, I will. I will talk about it. I just, people keep having announcements and I will do mine at the end. I just want to let everybody speak first. Yeah. You don't have anything? Okay. So my my one uh, announcement, it's the uh, director to stake up. Uh, on the 19th, I believe, whenever the protest was for uh, Palestine, this uh, SDS and a group of students, they went to the Golden Mayor's house um, and Employees at the Golden Mayor House met them with speakers, and the protest was drowned uh, by the speaker noise. Given that this is an AHAC-owned building, that is suppression of speech over students. 
Uh, so I just need Seikab to please look uh, like what is Seikab, what is AHEC's response on this and like what are the expectations for their employees because we, we cannot suppress student speech at any point if they're not doing anything violent. I like I just want to make sure that I get like all of the information so that when we bring it up with Alyssa and everyone else, um, I understand. So we're the. Do you want me to help explain what happened? Yeah, because I just don't understand who was so, doing what. I guess. Go ahead. So, a brief synopsis: um, SDS kind of formed a rally in front of the, the Gold Mayor House, and there were some counter protesters on the Gold Mayor House. Well, halfway into their rally, um, <clears throat> those counter protesters brought loud speakers okay. and were playing very loud music and drowned out the protest. Okay. So the protest then moved to JSSP. So that, that's what happened. I have a video of it. We have yeah, of it. we do have video. Um, my concern is that we need to find out if the people that were at the Gold Mayor House are employees of AHEC, because if that is the case, that is a private entity suppressing a student's free speech. Okay. That's what, I, that's what we need to know. Do you have any questions, Gabe? Go ahead, Gabe. I, awesome. Um, so thank you very much for for bringing this to, to our attention. One, if you could, y'all could send me that video to either me or Kristen, that would be great. Um, and so then with with all of that, um, from what I know, um, sitting, so from what I know, the group that did like the anti protests were not a heck um members right like the, the it was not a heck that did like the anti-protest but rather an, another separate group um that just fr from what i know because that day was the abon meeting and we touched on it um okay. and so that's that's part of it there were two different groups and the and the ones with the speakers from what i know right again this could all you know change or whatever with more information or and stuff comes out but from what I know, they um, did not. It was not the the AHEC group who set up those speakers, but rather it was the Rabbi Ort, which was the the counter protest group who who, who brought up l like the banners and stuff, as long as the stereo system, um, even though they were not authorized to do so, um, and so that was like like a surprise even for a heck too um from from everything that i know and so we'll ask and see what a heck will respond to this if they have any response um but yeah that's just wanted to provide that extra context awesome okay well thank you for your help finding out more information okay that moves us yeah everybody's good Okay, we move to faculty, staff, and senate. John, do you have anything from that? Okay. Um, I, uh, the faculty senate is still working on reframing a lot of, like they're right now are just like reframing and polishing all of their policies. So they've been working on like, like constant readings. I do have a couple of this from the uh, UPAC, the University of Policy. And Okay. Yeah. yeah. Use yeah. policy planning. Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, so the board is asking the university to set up a reserve that it's going to be 50% of the annual expenditures. Um, my concern with this and what I'm bringing up is the fact that in the last two years, as we know, the expenditures with, with admin have skyrocketed while the expenditures and faculty and students have not. Uh, that is our tuition money. So we really need to be looking into what this reserve looks like and we need to be questioning admin, like what, what is going on? Even where is this money coming from? Because faculty has asked for many resources and they've been constantly told that there is no money. But now, I mean, and, and they, have, they have been advised by like government and experts that this is what universities usually do. And this is a formal process that every university goes through. I just still think that we should have a say in what is going on and how much. But that's just me. Let me know if you guys want and then just I'm gonna send that email. What's up? Oh, so you're gonna send an email with specifics about what's I'm gonna ask oh. about expenditures and I'm gonna ask someone to come tell us like what that looks like. 
Thank you. Yes. Anyone else on this? Okay. And then <coughs> Okay. I will do that. Yes. Can you clarify what's the thirty percent? The fifteen. It's oh. a fifteen percent of annual general fund expenditures. So around the university, that's what they want us to do as a reserve. I don't know how or like when it will start. Or because they don't this is like it was the first reading this mm -hmm. week so uh jim carpenter brought the idea up and they're still looking at it that's why i'm bringing it up right now because it's very it's in the very early stage okay all right yeah okay interesting I think um and then the last thing from it is a uh they're doing What's your boss's name? I'm so sorry. And the veterans? Oh, uh, Joseph Foster. Foster. Yeah, Joe Foster came in and he asked for formal policy. I mean, yeah, formal university policy of 60% return for the withdrawal of like any um, veterans or military students. So if they withdraw the class, the federal government gets 60% back of the tuition, 60% back of the tuition money. Um, so the university does not have a formal policy on that. They are working on it. Um, so, yes. Iman, he went to the staff or the... Or the, the university policy. Went, so you were, okay. I was there, yeah. Do you mind if we can work on that together? So we're not doing anything. Oh. I'm just updating you. This oh, is like update. university. This is oh, like God. university policy thing okay. that affect our students. Um, so... Federally, we have to do this as a university, and we like we have to. There's just not no written policy about it. Mm -hmm. It has been being done, like it has yeah. been done, but we need to have a written policy. Yeah. You have to, so, so they they have been returning the money to the yeah. government. Yes. Okay. I was have. gonna say if they haven't been returning the money, that's mm -hmm. one thing. We'll be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. So Joe, Joe said it's trying to avoid okay. yeah. getting us. Okay. Trouble. So we're just getting we're getting documentation that that is what we do. We yes. have not been stealing. Okay. Money. Okay. No, we have not. Okay. No, no. Thank you for clarifying. Perfect. 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 Also reports to me, so I okay. know about this. Awesome. Okay. okay. I was a little concerned. No, no. <laughs> Okay, that is it for me. Any questions? No? Awesome. Uh, for the New York Council, Paul is not here. Try institutional way. Can, oh, yeah, sorry. Can I make a point about that? It is not the Dean of Council. Every week I hear that, I'm like, that's fascinating. Okay. And that's confusing. Can we make sure that we uh, update that? And I meant to ask Kenny to, it's actually the Council of Chairs and Directors is the committee that Paul is attending and updating on. It's not the Dean of Council. I don't even know what that is. It's just general council. Yeah, it we send a center room did fine and we just talk about council. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, institutional. Uh, as of right now, we are meeting with uh, UCD and CCD next Wednesday to talk about more about the EVT machines that Matt brought up earlier, as well as other. Uh, what was it, ABOC voting or ABOC? Yeah, basically what Gabe is going to talk about. On. Yes, and we're going to bring that up to the other two SGAs on campus and see what they think and, you know, see if they're willing to back us up with that. There was one other thing. Oh, um, working towards creating front tabling. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are our tabling bill, it basically fills in that gap for us to bring those tabling dates to the other SGAs to see if we can table with them together okay. in a sign of solidarity. Okay. And that's that's it. That's all. Um, actually, we're also going to bring up and try and narrow down priorities for that group as well. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Any questions on this? Yeah. Dr. Varel, Armando, something? Good, good, good. Yeah, um, so just a, a couple of updates. One is related to um, office access and usage. Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't have to bring up a meeting, but I think you already No, it was, it was me and I forgot. Oh, you forgot. Okay, so well, just as a reminder, I shared this in a meeting about three weeks ago, uh, and I just want to reiterate it. I think I was online that day. Um, but I just want to reiterate that when you all um, are accessing any offices, for example, the, the, the what is your office? 407. 407. 
um, that you all have key card access or badge access, fob access that you are given as council members, right? As elected officials to access that space. And I recognize that last year you all read or passed a resolution to give students access to the space and you want it to be more inclusive, which is fine. But I just want to remind you all that it is um, not a practice that we should be handing our key card badges or FOBs to other folks to be able to access that space, especially when no one is there, but even when you are there, because that is there is a lot of heightened security issues. There are a lot of heightened security issues going on around campus, as we all know, observing everyone needs their, you know, their, their access to be able to get into buildings. And so I just want to remind everyone that if you are allowing folks to use your badge to get into particular accessory secured spaces on campus, that you run the risk of losing your access. So I just want to remind everyone of that. Um, again, because it was even brought up in President's cabinet the other day yeah. um, for senior leaders to remind their staff and professional staff and students. So I'm reminding you all, it reminded me that I need to remind you all of that. Um, it's kind of a big deal, and you run the risk of losing your access if you do that. And it, it, we discovered that that's happening. Um, so I just wanna wanted to offer that. And then there was something else that I want to know. Decorum. Um, yeah, we just want to kind of touch on professionalism, decorum, and meetings of when you're operating and working with students, student body, professional staff, uh, things like that. I know we all fight. You know, the white supremacist conflict, conflict uh, well, I was going to say white supremacist views <laughs> and, you know, the white male professionalism term, but there is a level of professionalism that we all still need to carry ourselves with um, in our meetings when we are addressing conflict, when we're addressing each other, um, and as such, just because, you know, we are elected officials, you all are elected officials of the university, and that comes with a uh, big responsibility for service. Um, the last is that all for you? Yeah, I mean, and just to add on to what Amanda is saying, I think just let's be mindful of the vanity that we're oh, using yeah. and how we're Oops. conducting ourselves. These meetings are all recorded, and a lot of people watch them. I don't know if you all realize that faculty are watching them, and the leaders are watching them, and the ways that you all um, express yourself, conduct yourself, it is actually irritated, angry, or frustrated, or whatever, you know, and to share your passion in these meetings but keeping sight of right how we're communicating and how we're carrying ourselves is really important because it doesn't look great um when there are performance being thrown either way or back and forth or under our breath or all of those things so just want to remind you all of that john go ahead okay i'm glad you so one of the things i have to say is on this campus, we think a lot about protection. It's always protect, 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 protect. But we don't think about affection. We don't, we don't, we don't think about, and, and I'm, I ain't gotta jump all over the place. I know how to speak. We don't think about how we all interact as humans on this campus. Okay. We spend more time with protection rather than we do with affection. And I think that a lot of times some of the conflict comes about because we don't think about, we're all human. We all interact. And that's something that I have not said anything about. I think we need to think about that. Because I students have shared things with me and I've talked to students. And sometimes we're so fear-driven that we forget that we're all human. And that's the that's why I've been quiet. It's, it's not enough affection. We all deserve the utmost care, but we're if we're always protecting then that's the word of fear, because fear is false evidence of being real. It creates a lot of stagnation that's not necessary. So I just wanted to kind of remind you all about that, because I'm very mindful when I'm listening to you all. I'm quiet purposefully, because when I open my mouth, I like to reach people, not breach people. And so, and then I'm out myself. When I was younger, I used to, my mom used to flip out, and I used to have to apologize. But Let's just all think about affection. Because when we all get our degrees. I'm so sorry. We just, we have to 
Um, yeah. I, I appreciate your words. I am so sorry, but we have Cassie. <laughs> Cassie's <laughs> coming in 30 minutes, and we have to release Michael to go back to the board of yes, trustees. Yes, Yeah, I'm so sorry, Beth. But so I'd say we would really that and come back no, to no, the no. house. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Mine's super quick. Um, for advisors, mine, since we have what is it, four members out right now, sending out those updates in the email. What? Sure. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, advisors. Okay. Do you, Dr. Bell, we mentioned this yesterday. Do you mind sending out a um, written statement about the petition? Right. Um, so I will be, I forgot about that. Just quickly, I will be, um, I sent something out two weeks ago, I think that was, um, just as a reminder to you all after I spoke to the council. Um, about some of the advice and recommendations um, that I had to offer after meeting with general counsel. And then in the meeting in person, I also reiterated those points. And so I will, as it relates to the, a lot of the things going on, so many things going on and a lot of the conflict, I uh, expect that next week I will be sending out another something um, in writing because not everyone is here in person at the meeting and I want to make sure that we're all clear and all on the same page yes. about um, where we're at and how you know how it is expected that you all need to move forward in order to kind of sort through some of the things that have gone on over the past few weeks so expect that that will be coming next week. Thank you Dr. Brown. Okay are we good? Yes. Gabe I'm gonna have you start because uh, we're going to move to new business and we're talking about resolution and support of ABOD, ABOD vo uh, voting power. Okay. Perfect. Uh, cool. So do you want me to, to, to read all of it? Um, I don't know if like, y'all have had the time to read it. Do you want me to read all of it? Whatever is um, best for you in six of time. Do you just want to give a, a quick re recap of why we're doing this and then go to the therefore? Awesome. Yeah, perfect. Um, so basically, I'll just read the, like the abstract because that provides like that quick little recap. I'll do the abstract and therefore. Um, and so SACAB and FACAB, which are the two advisory boards uh, to the area board, um, have two reps which voice the faculty and staff opinions on this board. And they represent the voices, students and faculty from SU Denver, the Community College of Denver and CU Denver. However, they do not have a power to vote, restricting the full potential of the representation. Thus, the MC Denver student government supports our state cab and fake cab boards and pushing this effort forward. And the effort is uh, to urge um, ABOD, which is the Area Board of Directors, to allow their state cab and fake cab reps to have a vote. Um, and I'm going to get more into the nuance of like a little background about this after I finish this resolution. So the therefore would be MSU Denver Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council brings forth this resolution as a statement of concurring support for the identical resolution passed by SACAB on Tuesday, October 17th. And basically, um, this is the resolution just in, in support of SACAB. And this is to show that not just SACAB and FACAB want this, but rather this is like a tri-institutional effort. And once this is presented to the Area Board of Directors and they vote on it, um, of course, we can't have the power yet because of like the Colorado legislator, but this is like the first initial step to show that we are all un united on this effort and that we all want the same thing, um, ho hopefully making it easier to push for it, showing that all institutions want this, um, including hopefully a heck. And yeah. Okay. Thank you. I am going to start uh, the timer for the discussion if anybody wants to uh, give me one sec. Working on it. <clears throat> okay. Anybody? Any comments? If you don't have a no, nobody. Wow. I think it's great. I, I love it. it. I love that we're doing this. I just do want to clarify that, as Michael said last week, this is going to be a lot of reading work. Um, it's just. Oh, sorry. Speaking of the core, that's my fault. Um, it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, lobbying the state is not easy. Uh, so we are going to need to mobilize ourselves and mobilize students as well. But this is the only way that we will be able to get into those private meetings because they fix. Okay. Anybody wants to motion? I motion to vote on this resolution as it is. I second. Okay, let's go. Uh, everybody who agree? Aye. 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 Anybody? Any 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 abstentions? Any opposition? 
Beautiful. Okay, people. Better be ready. Yay. It, it passes. We're getting. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Beautiful. Okay. Michael. Okay. So that's the only voting business we have on the calendar right now? Yes. yes. Okay. I do have to get back. Um, one thing on the community norms day, I know Reed's going to be presenting that. Um, I read over the document. Um, I think it's a great first step. Um, I do want to just put that thought out here. There should be a punitive action in there. I get, I understand kind of the reason behind it, but like if someone's not doing the work, we need to get rid of it. That's just kind of my thoughts on that. That I want to leave when we go into the next discussion, but um, I was in discussions and stuff going on. So I do have to go back to the trustees. So thank you. Thanks, thank Mike. You, Mike. Board of trustees. Okay, have fun. Uh, I we do have Cassie in nine minutes. Uh, do you do you want to read? Would you like to start discussing this, and then would you be okay with a, pa a pause in the middle, possibly? Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I hope everybody we, got a copy of this. Or Who Armando wants to get has started. A, Armando has. A, yes, Armando. Actually, I don't know if I formally have. A, Authority on advises. Um, for the sake of time, so yeah. I don't want Reed's discussion to get cut after, you know, in between the presentation with ASCP. So um, while we let Cassie get ready, will we just can you just do your announcement for the Denver Inc. scholarship? Because yeah. that's a quicker thing, just to you know, knock things off the book. The, so it doesn't get disrupted. Yeah, I think the discussion is needed to. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Free, is that okay? Sure. Thanks. Elise is on here too, so hopefully she can hang for a little bit longer. Oh, oh, true. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Let's move forward. Cassie's here. Um, Elise, would you be? How until when can you stay? I actually do have a meeting at um one thirty. Mm. So, um, uh, so depending on how long that goes, I could jump back in and see if y'all are still talking, but, um, just you know, know I'm here to support. What I'd love this, if y'all don't mind is I would love for Elise to kind of just give her thoughts on this. You all are seeing this. We don't have to read it right now, but Elise's perspective from restorative justice view on this can at least be kind of simmering in your mind. So if you want to take that and just talk to it briefly, Elise, that might be great. And then we can break to go to this other person. And then I can talk in detail about it and get thoughts. I, I like that. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you, Elise. The floor is yours. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't seen the updated document yet so I will well I will just say basically I've introduced what this is about if you can if we can go down a little bit further I took Elise's advice about setting this up as a bit of a draft that'll be evolving and you know when we talk about one thing go up a little bit more please Kenny right here the community concern circle model um, and so the different kind of levels of intervention, I suppose we can call it. And so to speak about this process, because it is a restorative practice, it would be nice for you to kind of introduce it, I think, if that's all right. Yes, that makes sense. OK. Um, so um, Re and I were just chatting um, around the different ways in which TSEC can kind of engage in accountability driven conversations and also not have to be in the position to make decisions on um, like punishment or consequences on behalf of the people involved in situations because kind of from last year's events um, there were some issues, for instance, with like due process and um, people being able to kind of work through situations. Um, so instead of looking at this group, this accountability committee is like a, the ones who determine 
consequences, looking at this more as like a liaison to helping navigate conflict and tough situations. So one of the things that this group can do is something called um, community of concern circles. Um, and uh, it's a restorative practice. It's kind of like a hybrid between a community building circle and a, and a accountability circle where you're addressing a specific harm. Um, and it's more about being able to tap into the, the team dynamics and see how things are going. You could talk about specific issues uh, that you are attending to as a TSAC. Um, and then come up with some solutions as to how you want to address issues. So this is more on the general scope and would be one thing of like maybe a continuum of things that this group could tap into. And so there's some information here about the community concern circle model and um, the folks part of this committee or maybe all of TSAC. I'd be happy to train folks on how to facilitate this so that way um it can kind of become embedded within the group um, and then for things that require maybe additional assistance like a third party facilitator to address interpersonal conflicts or things that are just um that may have kind of gotten really big and intense and difficult to to navigate then the tsac can refer to restorative justice and student conflict resolution services to help facilitate those kind of on the side um, or um, as a part. But this committee could like recommend those things, but maybe not like say um, you have to do X, Y, Z things. I think there's a lot of things to be figured out. So this is, you know, I would encourage folks to just like think about it in draft form. And I recognize this is me talking about it. And I think you all should feel like you have buy into this and feel you have ownership of this. And so um, all I'll say is like, this is a tool, one tool that you can use amidst, amongst a number of other tools. Thank you, Elise. Okay, I'm gonna ask that since this is like an accountability thing and we're like, though we please stay off our phones if it's not related to like what we're doing. Because that was I know, <laughs> I, I, I see you. Um, but like if your phone activity is not related to, because we have to be present. Like this is, there is no excuse to not be present in this discussion given everything that has happened in the past two weeks. Thank you. Um, okay. And, and then we can talk further about this after this presentation we're going to receive um, from the, um, this other person um, right now, but um, I'll go into more detail and then other aspects that exist with the Judicial Committee in the Constitution are a little more punitive and that's like a more escalated step that we would okay. rework, but this is an additional step that, like Elise is saying, that we can handle kind of in-house, I guess, in a way that is productive and hopefully collaborative, which, you know, we've all talked about wanting it to be. So I'll pause there for what's next and talk about this right afterward. Awesome. Thank you, Ree. Hi, Cassie. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice. Thank you for being here. Of course. Um, okay, we're going to give you the floor. Go ahead. Quick transition. All right. I like it. Um, okay. I am... I think, oh, this is going to be funky watching myself up there. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, let me get my PowerPoint there. Someone like me. Oh, we don't know. Thank you. Okay. Let me go over there just in case. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Get a good look at you. Okay, I'm here. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm muted here, so I shouldn't have any reservation, which is good. All right. Thank you all for having me. Um, I'm very excited to be here. I don't think that I personally have ever 
had the privilege to speak to this body before. Um, so I'm really excited. I have some familiar faces in the room already, um, which is really nice to see you all here in your space. Gabe and um, Naomi and Paul have asked me to come and do this presentation for you all, just so that way you can learn about our program and kind of what we do and potential ways to get involved with us. Uh, so, you know, backing up, they all serve on the subcommittee for sustainability. And that's where we have that, that intersection. Gabe is actually our appointed chair from SACAP for our subcommittee. So it's very exciting to have um, them as awesome student leaders to work with all the time. I will go through these PowerPoint slides. Um, I know you all have a lot to talk about, so I'll try to move quickly. And if you have any questions or if you want me to go back a slide at any point, just say, hey, can I see, please turn around or any this. So, hello again. My name is Cassie. I am the Assistant Director of Sustainability for the Auraria Sustainable Campus Program. I'm actually an MSU Denver alum. So happy to still be working on this campus. I studied human geography with a concentration in sustainability. I also have an associate from community college in Columbus, Ohio, called Columbus State Community College. That was with a focus in psychology. So I've had an interesting journey to get where I'm at today, um, but I do love this campus and I love the ASCP. Our mission at the Aurary Sustainable Campus Program, if you have ever heard of us, is with the explicit goal to reduce the Auraria campus's ecological impact and dependence on fossil fuels. So we do this through projects and programs and partnerships and events um, and all kinds of good stuff with all three institutions. And um, we are technically housed in AHEC, the Auraria Higher Education Center, which I think most of you are familiar with. Um, it's more like the landlord's <laughs> uh, So we are housed under them because it was the only way that we as a student fee funded operation could not be directly affiliated with a single school. So we're housed kind of almost as a subsidiary uh, underneath AHEC, but we have $9 of every student's fee every semester come to us. And then we do all of that great work um, towards reaching our mission, but we serve all three schools and all three schools intentionally. Um, and since this student is funded, we try to make sure that we include student voice, and I'll talk more about that later. But if you're ever interested in kind of the work that we do or learning more about our strategic plan or the vision that we are setting prior to this meeting or post this meeting, um, it's all on our website. We have a fully functioning website. It's, it's listed there. I'm happy to also answer questions at any time. Pop by my office. But uh, the way that we break down our work because sustainability is so vast and broad, we have it broken down into seven pillars of sustainability. So alternative transportation, education and outreach, energy efficiency, food and gardens, renewable energy, waste diversion, water conservation. At any given time, we are doing all of these. I think I've in some way, shape or form touched all of these today. So <laughs> it's very dynamic. We try to tackle a lot, um, but it's really fun work. And we try to blend in social sustainability and equity into everything that we do. Um, we recognize that we are on double stolen land, whether it be from the tribal nations or from our displaced Iranians. Um, we try to interact as much as we can with making sure that the work that we do is upholding a high social sustainability and equity lens. We also focus heavily on greenhouse gas emissions reductions which I'm, I don't know how many <clears throat> scientists we have in the room, um, but it can get pretty in the weeds. I'm not going to go too in the weeds about that. But just so you all know, we base everything on science and you can't manage what you don't measure. So we have goals. And um, in 2008, actually, all three institutions and AACAC had their presidents and chancellors sign what was called the American College and University President's Climate Commitment. So that was a commitment to have reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, 20% by 2020, 50% by 2030, 80% by 2050. So the schools were previously on board with this mission, still are, hopefully. <laughs> um, but we 
kind of lead towards that goal. Um, so you all know the breakdown of the campus is that 50% of our emissions come from buildings, HF, energy, lights, all that jazz. 32% um, come from community, lots of single occupancy vehicles. I think the average mile traveled um, to and from this campus for a theater is 42 miles, um, which is wild. So lots of impact there, air travel, um, landfill waste, uh, 5% seems like not a lot, but that's something to the tune of um, 100,000 pounds of waste just in the landfill every year. So it's a big thing that we try to focus on. Uh, that 2008 goal, not ambitious enough. We have changed significantly since um, 2008 to 2023. And we know that climate change is real, anthropogenic climate change is real, and that we need to be more robust in the way that we are approaching our greenhouse gas goals. Um, we have changed now to, we kept that 20 by 20 goal, and now we're doing 2030 to get to 50% reduction, and then in 2050, 100%. So we're expediting things. And this is not wild or bizarre, compared, wild or bizarre. Um, compared to other schools, compared to the city of Denver, we are um, actually a little bit behind the curve. CSU is the golden standard for sustainability in the front range, but um, you know we have some alignment um, and we try to do actions to get there. I will excitingly let you know that we met our 2020 goal. We met 20% nice. by 20, which is fantastic. Uh, we had, we went all the way down to minus 22% roughly in 2021. Um, and then unfortunately the waste world changed in the front range. So compost, okay, a little while. And we have bumped back up uh, a little bit to 20. And I think we might be in the 18 world right now, but we are doing things to fix it and get back in line, um, which I'll talk about later, but very exciting stuff. Very exciting that we've met our goals. Um, and over the course of our program, we've done a lot of different things. I've only been here for four years. The ASCP has been in existence since 2011. It actually originated as a student org, interestingly enough. And that student org found that it was important enough for sustainability to be action oriented, tangible things on campus that in 2011, they uh, instilled that $5 student fee for a student vote. And then that went on for a little while, for a couple of years. And then in 2016, I think it was, that vote was, or that fee was voted into perpetuity. So we didn't have to go back and get approval from the student body for a year. Um, since then, we've expanded. In 2020, um, there was a 3% increase for compost specifically. Um, so the students went out, got a lot of uh, signatures and expanded for those $3. We've also taken all of that money and put it back into the campus. So art solar array, library solar array, we're increasing access to um, secure bike locking um, by putting in secured bike shelters. We've created a garden on campus, we've hard recycle programs, um, all kinds of really great stuff. And it makes impact. It actually makes impact on campus. Um, I won't read through every single thing on this slide, but this is a one academic year, 2.2 uh, .2 million kilowatt hours um, per year energy savings for the solar array, uh, 3 million pounds of greenhouse gases avoided, over 2,000 pounds of electronic waste recycled, uh, lots, of, lots of great things. Here's a picture of those covered bike shelters. This is really cool. This was actually a student project. So my boss, Chris, partnered with an CU architecture, I think it was, class, and they designed and built all of this. They were out there breaking the ground. They were the ones stacking the, the tiles. Um, so very, very cool, great way to get involved. Um, it's all renewable resources. And um, so it also helps benefit students to be able to launch their exit safely. We also have the largest solar array in downtown Denver on the library. It has received multiple awards um, by Downtown Denver Partnership and some others. It's really cool 
if you all want to go to the next year, it's a the Nagala tour, uh, but it's uh, really awesome. It supplies two thirds of the library's electricity, um, offsets over 1.2 million pounds of CO2e a year, and um, it's 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 a really really big impact for our campus. Just being able to have that single array, we're also exploring more options for agrivoltaics, which is a combination of um, solar and then gardening underneath. Um, so more renewables on the way to try to help continue our goal. Yes. As I mentioned, we also focus on waste since it is a big part. We have volunteer events where you can help um, get in the trash and get dirty and start sorting things. Um, we also have full scale hard to recycle program. We uh, accept personal care products, electronics, cigarette butts, metal, and um, there's one more, but I can't think of it. Oh, soft plastics and uh, thick supplies. So it's a great way for us to help increase our diversion rate on campus. Should I keep going? Yes, yes we're still at the end. Yeah, okay. Um, we are also, as I had mentioned earlier, the waste world has changed significantly in the last 10 months. And we are taking compost in her because basically the only compost operations facility in the front range was no longer going to accept EPI certified compostables or paper, which is completely impossible for our operation of this scale. Um, also 0% contamination, that is impossible. So we applied for a grant for CDBHE, got it. And we are implementing an in-vessel composter. It's, it's that picture right there on the bottom. It's basically, oh, I have a picture. Oh, wow. Um, it's, it's basically a huge biodigester and it increases the ability to compost by, I think, six weeks. And it, it also allows us to be able to do the EPI certified and paper in this vessel. So it's fantastic. We are, as I mentioned on this last slide, we are now collecting, hauling, sorting, and processing all of the compost here on campus. The investor actually gets here in December, but we're already doing the sorting and the processing. Um, and then that compost will be redistributed on campus. So it'll go into the flower beds and it won't go into anything industrial or excuse me, um, agricultural, just because we are going to be breaking down those EPIs and sometimes they have crushed chemicals in them. But we will be using it on flower beds, we'll be using it on the grounds at large. So we're going to create a closed loop system here on campus, which is the only thing of its kind in the state. We're really excited about it. Uh, this is just a picture of the nitty gritty of what happens inside the chambers. I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, yeah, this takes me to the next point, which is we do everything on student voice. We are student fee funded and we prioritize the interests of the students. And the way that we can best get involved is to one, do things like this, come and talk to you. Um, and then two, we do a biannual survey. So it's actually live, it's open right now. I have a slide, I'm gonna ask you all to take it. Uh, but we asked on this survey, sorry, that is very difficult to read, um, but I'll just take you through it. So the first one is, I'm concerned about environmental issues in general. And we see from year to year, each, each line is a, a different year, that um, over 90% every single year of the students who have taken this, have voted either a four or a five in that this is important to them. The next one says, it is important to me that the Aurora campus continue to become more environmentally sustainable. Again, all of those are over 90 for that being a high priority. Um, environmental sustainability had an impact or would have an impact on my choice to college or university. That is still above 50%, which is really good because retention is important. Um, I would love for that to be a 90, but uh, not everybody has sustainability top of mind, so I understand. Um, it's still really, really good. And uh, it's important to me that the Auraria campus prioritize climate action and the reduction of our campus greenhouse gas emissions. Again, above 90% of the people polled said four or five, um, which indicates our work is important. And uh, we do want to let you all know that these surveys are not us going around to all the environmental departments saying, Hey, I know your students are involved in this. Will you please have them take it? This is us going out and tabling. This is us hosting events. This is us trying to reach the community at large. 
So we're really trying to get a representation of what students want us to see and what they want us to prioritize. Um, this is a very small slide on that big screen. So I'm just going to point out two things. Uh, get this out of the way. Same scale. Uh, people who voted above four or five in importance, um, ranking the different pillars. And we see every year that uh, energy efficiency is really high. It's this top one. Waste diversion is the second highest. No, waste diversion is the top highest. Energy is the second. And then water conservation is up there as well. So, implementing compost, or you want to see waste diversion, energy efficiency. We're doing LED lighting upgrades in this building right now. Um, heard. Uh, renewable energy is up there. Water conservation. I'll teaser. I'll tell you more about water later, but all of these things we're hearing, we're prioritizing, and um, I'm going to skip this slide. Oh, wait, no, I'm not, because it's important for later. This is talking about specific types of programs that we could run, and as you can see on this one, two, three, four, the fourth one, reduce plastic, that is by and large the top priority for our students every single time that we take this. So waste diversion, again. It may be only be 5% of our greenhouse gas emissions, but students want to see it, so we're prioritizing it. Um, here's a little pitch about the compost referendum. So that was in 2020. I already mentioned a little bit about it earlier, but there was over, I think, 2,000 students who signed the petition. And then once it got into vote, it passed with 70% support to implement this $3 fee and have it specifically oriented towards compost. So that Invesil composter, yes, we got a grant for the Invesil itself from CDPG, but there's also all the other infrastructure that requires the toters, the bags, the hauling, the truck, all that jazz, that is directly being applied from that $3. Um, and we're excited about it. We have also implemented 62 of these new tri streams that include compost. We will continue to do this over the next however many years it takes to do a full-scale campus overhaul, but money going to work. And that has resulted in our diversion rate increasing rapidly. So we've gone from that 18.1% diversion rate up to 28.4%, which is fantastic. This is not only to do with compost, we also have move out programs where we collect all the materials from the dorms that would have otherwise ended up in the landfill that now go to our free store. We have those hard to recycle programs like I told you about. I would say metal alone is 2,000 pounds a month of diverted materials from the landfill. So super cool. We're excited to be meeting our goals. Um, and we're still, we still got a way to go. That 20.8% uh, as of 2019, um, is okay. We're pretty in line with the, the state. The state's actually lower, the state's at like 13. But when you look at CSU, the Golden Standard, or C Boulder, or UCCS, they're in the 60s and 50s. So lots of potential, lots of potential for us to grow. Um, I mentioned these hard to recycle programs already. Please use them. There's one in this building right next to the info desk. Um, there will be more coming online in the Library soon. Uh, I don't think I need to talk about these waste diversion programs. Um, something else that we do for our conversation right now is education and outreach. It is one of our pillars. It's really important. Being involved with the community, getting input from the community on what you all want to see is really important to us. And so we have an entire volunteer program if you're interested in getting involved. Like I mentioned, we're doing a full-scale upgrade in this building to convert to LEDs. You can shock. There's only 10% of this campus on. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much that would help uh, if we just did most of the lighting LED-wise, like percentage to reaching, what was it, CSU or whatever? Um, it's probably a hard, like, hard to quantify right now. I don't know if you... So if we were to convert the entire campus to LED, mm -hmm. if we would be closer to the greenhouse gas reduction, right. is that what you're asking? I don't know the exact calculation there because I don't know how much of the energy or the, the 
right. that comes from lights versus right, right. HVAC. Okay. Um, I could get those numbers, likely. I could get those numbers. Um, but the buildings aren't necessarily separated in that way in, right. the, way, in the bill that comes from Excel. Mm -hmm. But if we, so if you convert from halogen or incandescent or fluorescent to LED, I think the increase in savings is like almost 50%. Mm -hmm. The old lights are very, very, very inefficient. And so much so that there's legislation going forward that incandescents like can't even be made or distributed anymore. So the state and other places are going in this direction. We're just trying to get over to that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It would make a huge impact. And this building alone, what are we saving? 50,000 pounds of CO2 heat just by converting this building alone. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, please get involved. We had fun. Uh, yesterday, we had all of CU SGA running around this building, <laughs> fixing all the lights and, and getting replacements. It was very fun when the alarms went off. But uh, yeah, I have more uh, coming up next Friday and following Friday. Please get engaged. We also do green events. So we have compost implemented at uh, events on campus. We just knocked down that door and we're implementing it, which is super exciting. We do waste audits, we do bin side buddies, where we help coach people at the bins, how to sort, uh, all kinds of good stuff. Um, green offices, if you work in an office on campus, we will help you make that office sustainable by getting LEDs in there and getting compost in there and implementing paper savings. And we are a free consulting service in that regard. So uh, please get us involved. Um, we also have a bunch of events coming up. We do a full workshop series every semester. It's open to all students, it's free. Um, happens on Thursday afternoons, and then on Monday, we're doing a spectacular. If you would like to come and get involved, we're going to be giving away sustainable sweet treats and little pizza pockets. It's from four to six in our office in Tiffany 346, and we'll be talking about how to do this Christmas season um, in an eco-friendly way. Also, some other things that we do are things like Earth Week, and then something very exciting that I want to talk about is Auraria Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. I think Naomi has already brought this up with you all, but it's happening November 13th, 14th, and 16th. This is a tri-institutional event in partnership. Um, yes. Well, I just want to touch base because I actually brought up today because we were sitting on the table in that week mm -hmm. as I talked to you a little bit ago mm -hmm. or yesterday. Um, we actually voted to and I can take work for you on that Monday during the first two events. During the first two uh, sessions? Yeah. Sweet. There so I'll connect involved. with you more on like the exact times after this meeting, but I just wanted to bring that up to your awareness. Thank you. And any of your events and stuff that you're referencing, mm -hmm. if you want to send them to me, I'll post them at least like on an Instagram and stuff. And I'm not give any flyers or anything in my windows. Great. Great. Yes, I think I just gave you the aha one. I got it from Dr. Cooper. Oh, great. oh no, you didn't need those ones. Now it's in the order. Okay, I will definitely send it to you. Fun fact, I also managed to know. Um, so then I won't belabor this because uh, you all already know about it. But please come, come get involved. There's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of free healthcare products, um, sexual healthcare products, personal healthcare products, uh, in-person SNAP EBT signups. Uh, there's going to be haircuts for free, haircuts for free, lots of, there's food every day um, at almost every session, so get involved, come and join. Um, I know I'm getting close on time and I want to make sure that I provide a few minutes for questions. You all know that we have the advisory council, not going to talk too much about that. Um, and then something that I wanted to bring up before, I think this is my last thing, is that, uh, as mentioned, Eliminating or reducing plastic on campus is of the highest priority to students. And I believe, I believe that you all already have policy in place for student defunded events to make them green. I know for a fact that CU and CCD do because I helped them get through that process. Um, and I think that you all have that as well. I would. The green bricks. Yeah. The green, the green purchasing. Yes. Yes, so if you all need help in figuring out how to navigate that or implementing it at your events, 
let me know. Um, Riley would also be happy to help. Um, I also know that in the last group that was here, Taylor, he was trying to implement some of the back end trainings for you all and for student orgs. So if you need help with any of that as well, let me know. But that's you know your power to help create sustainable action on campus. So with that, uh, I will yield to questions, but please follow us on socials. Matt, if everything's posted on there. So if you just wanna follow us and then cross share, um, that might be easier than me sending you the graphics direct every time because there's a lot. I don't wanna spam you. So that would probably be easier. It's just kind of keeping a tab on that. And then um, here's the link to the survey if you have time to take it. Otherwise, you can always go to our website and just type in the search box survey. We have it in English and in Spanish um, available for you. So uh, please encourage your communities to take it. And uh, what can I answer? Send like that to our That's why I do something to my friends that I haven't put it in our window. Sure, we have a fly. Oh, a fly. Yes, thank you. For, yes. For so when we have food, um, I was taught that whenever you compost, you clean the food out of the container mm -hmm. and you throw it away. Mm -hmm. But isn't food a uh, part of the composting process? Mm -hmm. So that, that, that never made any sense to me. We, I was taught that rinse, take the food out, but food is to be composted. So is it really necessary to clean out the Okay, so there's a few things there. One, the compost stream can have um, EPI certified products. Matt, there's someone in there. So if you put your food in there, great, awesome. We accept food in the compost stream. And if the container that it's in is certified to go through compost, for like because it's a bioplastic, it's making corn or it's making paper, mm -hmm. then that we don't have to clean out, just throw them both in there. But almost everything that we have on campus right now is styrofoam or plastic. And so that's when you do the push it out, wipe it, and then most likely put it in the trash. I do do that. Okay. I was just, it just never made any sense to me to clean the food. So it has to do with the plastic. Yes. So in my mind, so in my mind, I would say the Okay. okay. Well, then you're doing the right thing. Okay. It's really if you see, you know, those little rectangles that have the numbers inside of them. Yeah. And they're all confusing and it's oil and gas guard. Um, if you see a seven, that means that it is a compostable plastic. Mm. Only seven. Only seven. Okay. That only seven. So don't trust any of the leaps printed on the side of your cup and like check to make sure that it says EPI certified compostable or it has that seven fucking triangle. Okay, thank you. Yep. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, do you guys offer any programs for credit for students or is it just a volunteer? So we have done internships in the past Okay. where um, there's an agreement between whatever institution and then us that the student will do the 150 hours plus mentorship. Um, in order for them to get class credit. So we've done that. Okay. We are also currently in pursuit of making the sustainability workshop series a four credit option. Okay. So can we help with that somehow? Maybe, okay. maybe. I'll um, you. Yeah, we should connect. Okay. Let's connect because I'm currently in conversation with the MSU ADS department. Um, Yes, or the Science mm -hmm. Department. It basically has to be held by a department, and then we can just be the, the instructors for it because we're not separately in an institution or affiliated. So that's what I'm currently pursuing, and student pressure in there. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Good yes. well, question. You said uh, every Friday you do the LED yes. replacement. We're doing it for the next two Fridays, and then we'll pause, and then we'll pick it back up in December. December, yes. okay. And I, my follow-up question would be, how many people do you take max for those volunteering events? So we had 15 yesterday. 15? Woo, that was a lot. Um, we don't have a max. We okay. don't have a max. I think based on um, the need of the building, we'll coordinate, but if you have a group of that are interested just getting connected and okay. figure it out. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry. On that note, 
um, in December, would you be one to maybe switch like a different day of the week if we wanted to join? Because obviously Fridays are harder for us. Or maybe an afternoon. Mm -hmm. The reason I did Fridays this time was to accommodate my work peers. Mm -hmm. We were anticipating three of us going in and doing everything, and then I realized we have a lot of people interested. Yeah. So yes, they will change. Right. And if there are specific times that you all want to do, I'm flexible. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Please. I'm gonna leave some cards. Yeah. Um please. and so great. anybody feel free to pop by anytime or email me. Oh my, Matt, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. see if I can get this. <laughs> I'll be all the time too. Cool. I do have to run to another meeting. Oh, so we appreciate you. Thank you for coming. get yeah. like 20, 30 people. Yeah. Just like okay. Does anybody need to go to the restroom before we start? Okay. This, I mean, the one here is busy, but one of them to work. work. Do we want to take like a two to three minute break? Like yes. Break before Let's do that. My brain is dialing. Okay, okay. Melted. Melted. <laughs> it's stronger hair gel. Why? It's come off. I put one earlier this week. It's back here. I don't see a difference. Personally. Like, you tell me. I mean, I see the outfit more than the hair. Yeah, I feel like the outfit. I like too. the hair because the hair looks great. I'm just saying I can't tell that there's gel in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. It's more hair. It didn't lose anything. I need a yeah. I got a page done. Nice. <laughs> How many? <laughs> How many? <laughs> Let me
We are back. Yeah. We are back. And okay, everybody's here. Beautiful. Okay, we are moving to our next uh, business item. And it's going to be the community standards and norm. Re, you have the floor. Hi, friends. All right. Hey, so, as we know, we are um, working on trying to come to consensus next week um, on this document to fit into. What I'd like to do is probably a two-stage process, right? So this is a more warm and fuzzy, obviously, um, attempt at our being able to solve problems at the lowest level, which is good for morale. It's good for collaboration and coordination on things that we need to do. You know, we don't always want to escalate things to the highest level. So as a way of trying to see... Um, a process to move forward successfully. Um, what I'd like to do, just tell, I mean, you probably read this by now, I hope, but the name of the committee, this is like the short version. The name of the committee would change to accountability committee from judicial committee, right? Um, we'd have different levels of intervention, I'll say. I would be acting as maybe the lead facilitator um, of this committee and maybe um, choosing two members of council to also facilitate. And so in that way, we would represent council interests if we're working with, say, the whatever it is for the University Code of Conta Conduct or the um, Restorative Justice Coalition, you know, and things when things are at the highest level of escalation. And for the lowest level of escalation, as Elise mentioned, if you'd heard her, we would be trained, I mean, we could train the whole council, but specifically three of us would be trained to kind of facilitate this type of work so that we can talk about the issues without talking about the people and their beliefs and their motivations and things, because it's about finding a way forward. And we just, that's important for this body this year and in future, right? To come up with a way that we can work together to problem solve and to bring um, value to the student body. Um, we can't hold little grudges among ourselves for whatever reasons. We've got to try to get things moving. So you might have looked at the process for this, right? And it's just this kind of informal process that we can try to use in the first instance. And I'm welcoming anybody who wants to add anything to this paper, please to do so, because it is my goal that we, we work on this, we have input into this. I'm gonna put it on SharePoint for our whole council, right? To be able to add to in the coming week, so that whether we bring it next weekend for vote next Friday or not, I mean, that would be amazing, but just so you know, love to welcome welcome your input and ideas with this. So what Elise was also thinking is, and she kind of mentioned it, is that the top end of this, when things are beyond, and kind of gone off the deep end, I guess we could say, we would then have a, a process of a kind of a judicial process, I suppose, but it would be outside of us. Um, it would be something where we'd involve these other departments with the university, right? And they would help us. Of course, we have the final vote on everything. This is not taking anything away from this council, from the membership um, for the final say on things, but taking it so that we have objective views on things and not just heated debate that kind of takes things sideways, you know, because that doesn't help. And we've, we've all, you know, seen that happen. Um, so the next step is to also be looking at the constitution as it stands with this higher kind of punitive part and reworking that a little bit so, okay, yes, maybe there are, it comes to a point where we need some other party to step in and help us resolve something, but that is beyond, 
it's reported back. It's outside of our what our council chooses. It's reported back to the council by this committee, my this um, accountability committee, and then voted on. So I would love to, you know, y'all, please, you know, tell me what you think of this initially. If is the if it's concerning, if you think it won't help, at least thought it was a good way forward where we're kind of backing up the truck a little bit to be more holistic in how we handle this to begin with. Do we open a time, right? Don't no, because we're not voting, so we can. No, we're not voting. Have... This is discussion. Go ahead, Kristen, and then I have Matt on the stack. Um, well, first of all, I want to say that I, I, I really appreciate all of this, and thank you, Reed, for taking it upon yourself to kind of get this laid out for us. I think one of the things in specifically doing just like a, a brief um, check into kind of like what the uh, like core purpose of community concern circles are, I, I really wanted to stress the idea that like what Re is saying is really designed to like stop harm kind of like on all levels. So not just um, for like the people that are like hurt in a conflict, but by like stopping it. I mean, the concept of restorative justice is obviously the criminal justice system continues to hurt people after they're doing it. So you're just continuing that cycle. So that's really what it's aimed for. So I, I definitely understand um, kind of like the, the instinct to want to inject like, um, like punitive things in nature, because obviously, especially recently, we've seen a lot of escalations and it's really tempting to go there but I think that for this discussion it's important to separate that part um, from the like uh, community concern thing so I think that keeping it as non-punitive as possible in the first step regardless of what we've seen over the past few weeks is is really important to me and we can talk about like the more heavy accountability and punitive stuff like she said later as kind of a separate thing but I think that for restorative justice to work, it really does need to be kind of as harmless as possible, I guess, in the first step. And Thank you, Kristen. Somewhat related to that. Um, and I think kind of related to Mike's point, but not trying to talk for him though either. Um, I think it would be potentially beneficial though to have somewhere in this document or committee like that point where it describes like when it needs to be escalated say to like at least in the restorative justice committee outside of um this committee so it doesn't have to jump straight to like punitive but right outlining when it needs to go to the next step yep which i think would probably be starting with the V's and getting the outside perspective and then that would link it to, I don't remember a counterpart's name, but who handles more of the punitive and letting it go outside there, but not in this committee. Like student code of conduct, but the HR yeah. kind of arms and things like that that are above and above and outside of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's so basically just defining like where the scope of this committee would end and when it needs to be outsourced yep. or escalated to the next stage of, con of conflict resolution or that could go into and up to like punitive stuff but have it outlined so it really defines on where this committee lives and its limitations mm -hmm. and where it would go from there i appreciate that matt and i think that um what you know as it stands in the constitution and what elise has seen she feels it's, you know, there isn't really a restorative part of it as it stands. And so it's, you know, so putting this into play and then taking some of that as a, a higher level, but delineating where that kind of starts and specificity about what that means, you know, pulling maybe some of it that exists and then using this committee as more of a information sharing back to larger council just in facilitating the information 
so the full council decides at the end about everything, whether it goes outside, it stays in here, you know, we are more neutral in this committee and the whole council is, is we're all collaborating, we're all talking about the concerns, we're all making, you know, final decision. But yeah, more, spe more specificity, I appreciate that. Can we let Dr. Brown speak? Oh, go, go, go. oh yeah, I didn't know she was speaking. Sure, and then Gabe wants to talk. Uh, um, I was reading this, and it's a great document, Rick. Um, thank you. Um, I did see a possible thing that might be needed to change or need to be added in mm -hmm. is in case the person who's in charge the chair right of the judicial committee or the lead mm -hmm. facilitator right mm -hmm. uh maybe like a section where if they're also involved in the situation it passes on uh you know like the second sure. person or the third person if the second person's also involved you know mm -hmm. just sure. as and, a case you know and another uh, excuse me for talking back i can't see the room but i just to answer that you know, I could also just be an equal facilitator of the three. I don't have to be a lead facilitator. You know, that's no problem with me. But I agree that if any of the facilitators are involved in some manner, in some kind of um, tension, that they would maybe yeah, s step kinda, aside I, from that. That's why three, I thought, would be a good number, too. Right. The closest way I can kind of put an example, and I don't wish to use this, but this is mm -hmm. the most well known one to me, is, in, you know, it's not use names. And no, I won't. It's just like in the military, if let's say someone becomes <laughs> unavailable, as I'll put it, uh -huh. nice terms here, um, it passes on to the next guy in charge and so sure. on and so on. That's how okay. I, I see it. I like yeah. it. So we'll have some kind of wording about recusing oneself, stuff like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna have Dr. Baron Gabe and then we'll go to you. I was just gonna say, um, Re, thank you so so much for refining what we talked about a couple of weeks ago and sure. working on this. I really appreciate the collectivism in this model and that it's not, I mean that it that it really is about how the council um works together to come to, and I know that you're never going to always agree, but through facilitated conversations that you all can collectively come to solution. And my thought and hope is that by being able to do that in practice when it comes to uncomfortable and really difficult things, that that will hopefully also uh, translate to more productivity and effectiveness outside of conflict too, that you're able to be more effective um, and able to move your work forward because this will hopefully be something, a skill set that you can translate to whatever situations y'all are working in, um, whether that's you know within the council or your collaborative partnerships outside of the council. So I really appreciate that. And um, I do want to say that something we really wanted to try to get away from is the punitive aspect mm -hmm. of this approach that um, we felt like the judicial committee was very much centered on punitive approaches. And so um, the restorative model, we think, although it's going to take more time, we thought was important in terms of like long term sustainability, positive direction forward so thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you for facilitating the conversation <laughs> hi gabe awesome thank you yeah um i i just also want to echo what what kristen said about this um great thing that we has helped create um and i think it's especially because it it, it does bring that aspect of of restorativeness and 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 like that first step which is then you know right away to to for lack of a better word attack the, like the people involved but instead you know kind of help them come back into the, the process of, of student government and all that fun stuff um and i really really appreciate the aspect of anything 
if anything needs to get to that higher level, it does go out of us. Because I think that has been one, one of the really big um, setbacks before with like any accountability on the council is us trying to to to, to deal with it ourselves. Um, and so that can just, you know, cr create a whole other la layer of drama and uh, people siding with people and, and all that stuff. And to really, really appreciate that that aspect of going elsewhere for that guidance versus us doing it ourselves. Yeah. Thank you, Gabe. I agree. I definitely agree. And this all started with Armando and um, Dr. Brone really wanting this different structure. And, you know, we met outside of school about this. It was really important to them. And then bringing in Elise with her amazing eye on, you know, what would really work for us? What would be fantastic professional development for all of us, right? Something we can take outside of this group, but also take into careers, you know? I write about this all the time in my job and about resolving issues at the lowest level. And then, you know, it, it's better for the project and these billion dollar projects I'm writing about, these clients, these DOTs and, and cities all around the country wanna see that kind of thing. So it's not new, it's practiced. And I think if we can get this, it'll help all of us to be better at getting to the heart of what we need to do and not get stuck on personality conflicts. It's just really important. So I appreciate you all. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to I'm going to add you all to this OneDrive um, um, account, I guess. I don't know. File and put it on track changes. And please add whatever you'd like leave notes, comments, you know, because this is for all of us to work on, all of us, whether we're here today or watching the recording. All right? Uh, I have John in the stack. So he sure. has a question for you. Go, John. Hey, and thank you again for everything. What is that? When you say call in, not out, what's an example of that so I can understand? Oh, back in the norms. Okay, so yes, just to yes, bring this up, this largely came from at least from our notes we had on the wall in our meeting a few weeks ago, and she put the common themes at the start, and then these were more from the exact post-it notes, and I took the liberty of editing that down and trying to um, kind of get to the heart of some of these things, and someone had written, and I'm sure someone there can say something to this, call in, not call out, like talk about the good aspects of what something the topic, what is being brought in, not pointing out the negatives, right? Is that, did I get that right? Oh, so you're saying that I know this from being raised with my mother, compliment <laughs> before you critique, is that's what you're saying, give a compliment. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, I, I for those who actually wrote that down. Um, so call and not call out is more like, hey, can you help me with this versus, hey, you're not doing anything. So you're calling them into the conversation right. or helping educate a little on something versus being like, you didn't do something right, you failed, and like the negative language. Yes. Right. And if you look at these things thematically as a general theme, well, I mean, we're not going to get every little point. The norms that you come up with in groups that you're in, in business that you're in, whatever, um, they're normally just a set of values that you kind of agree with so that people are respectful to each other. And it might not be your, all of your personal values that you're bringing to this, right? But it's just things that we can agree upon so that we can get work done. So if, and this will be in the document too, if you want to add anything you really feel is important that isn't kind of repeated in some way on this list, please add it. So I'm going to, when we finish this call, I'm going to add you all to this document and turn on the track changes in, in um, OneDrive. And please feel free to look at it over the weekend, early next week. And then um, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be talking to, you know, looking at this. We'll all talk together. This is not happening in a silo. That's the one thing I want to stress. And it might take us a couple weeks to get there before we have the resolution ready, but it'll be something everyone will have touched, I hope. Matt has a comment for you. Um, Go, Matt. So one thing that I saw also, it might just be out of the scope where you're trying to write here today, 
but also including how you call upon this committee. You want to expand? Um, so like, how do you access this committee to solve the lower end conflicts? Like, uh, like the judiciary committee model, like we would have to pull a motion to the floor or do you just talk to someone in that committee to help them connect both parties or whatever that might be? You know, that's a great point. And I don't think we had anything in the constitution on that. If we did, I ignored it. So put a note in there for me, Matt, and I would love anyone's ideas on how this comes to be. Uh, I mean, I'm good. I like it. Yay, structure. structure. Anybody else have anything? Okay, well, we have, just to recap, we have a lot of work to do, uh, starting with tabling. Let's go mm -hmm. that. Uh, let's make sure that we're supporting our SECA reps in that set and whatever they need for the ABOD. Uh, fill out your, um, no, not this survey, the poll, the, the, yeah, the, the, the poll, I can't speak, guys. P-O-L-L -L for re. Uh, and and then this. So make sure that we go and work this together. The unit table. Um. Yes, I'm gonna bring more information on the. So I'm going to table my scholarship announcement. Uh, and I'm also gonna talk to the PR committee before I do that. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Anything else for Esri? That's it. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Re. Okay, I I motion we adjourn the meeting. I second that. Let's vote. Everybody who agree. Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Any any opposition? Any abstentions? Beautiful. Bye. See you in a couple Bye. nights, Gabe. Bye, y'all. Bye, online people.